I had just uh, decided I was going to leave the BBC okay. um, to go and make <laughs> and do a degree in anthropology, as it happened, which was a non-starter, but I did. I decided, and um, I, I became a freelance, and I hoped to pay for myself with, free, with just occasional engagements. Um, and I, I walked into um, the BBC club one day, and the head of documentaries, a man called Hugh Weldon, suddenly said, Diebach, he being a Welshman, uh, do you want to go to Japan? And I said, y yes, of course. Uh, of course I want to go to Japan. Uh, would you like to make a f film by an orchestra? Yes, I could. He said, well, you could do both. Uh, you'll have to leave next week. And I said, why? And he said, well, the manager of the London Symphony Orchestra, who is very keen on the accounts, and has discovered that he's got four seats available, vacant, and it really hurts him to think they're not used. So we've come to a deal that if he gives you your tickets to go, would you direct a film about the London Symphony Orchestra's tour of Japan, which was the very first time a full-blown London a Western Orchestra uh, w went to Japan. And of course I, I, I said fine, and we left sort of three days later. Well, I had no time to think about what we were going to do and until I literally got on the plane, which was a, a big jumbo jet, or no, no, a big jet anyway, uh, and it was full of all the orchestral players. And I'd never travelled with an orchestra before, uh, and I had no idea what, what I was going to do. And I walked down the, the, the aisle, and there were all these people who I've always sort of worshipped, you know, as people in touch with eternity, as, as great musicians. And there they all were, playing cards and drinking and one thing, that's like normal human beings. And they said things like, oh, who are you? And what are you doing? And I'm making a program about you, the orchestra. Oh, you're just going to want conductors blowing their tops and things, aren't you? I said, certainly not. Of course not. He said, what's your idea? I had no idea really what it was. But, and then I thought, by the, before we got there, I thought I'm going to have to focus on some of the distinguished players who were taking the leaders of the sections and so on. And of course Neville was, was there, I mean she was the obvious person. And I picked uh, the oboe player uh, who was... Roger. He was... Roger Lord. Roger Lord, yeah. indeed. And Gervais. And Gervais de Pire. Uh, and I would, I would film them talking to their, as it were, equivalents in the Japanese orchestras and including uh, uh, master classes which they gave and which never gave and that was the film and it was it was it wasn't a great film but it was a pioneering film in that nobody had filmed orchestral rehearsals before in that way and there was Dorati uh, and there was uh, Monteur and there was Colin Davis um, but it was Dorati which in the end we, we featured uh, and it wasn't, uh, and it's, it, it set a pattern. I mean, orchestral rehearsals then became, could be seen to be rather interesting in discussions. Now I remember some quite abstruse uh, Durati instructions, which made absolutely no sense to me at all. And I don't think they did to the orchestra really, because his grasp of English wasn't I know. as, as, as uh, strong as all that. But, uh, but we staggered through it. And it was, wasn't until on the return journey that I discovered that Neville was actually, of course he was discussing with Roger Lord and with various other people about rehearsals. And then he revealed that he had the small group which was just recording. Um, and that was how I first heard of the Academy. Yeah. And then you came to supper. You probably heard more then. Yes, well indeed we came because, I mean we were good, we became friends, firm friends really. and. Uh, and I, and I knew him and you ever since, really. Yeah, yes. very lucky. Which is a long time. Lucky for us.